what is up you guys so today's video we're going to be talking about the rams draft and specifically the top five guards i think the rams should go after starting from you know last to their number one guard they should be targeting so i'm going to start with just talking about how important the Rams offensive line will be if they can fix it and basically you won't have all this chatter with Jared Goff with Todd Gurley with Brandon Cooks you know we're we're thinking about just basically trading everybody to fix the Rams offensive line off, offensive issues when it's basically just two positions it's the center and guard position the tackle position is pretty decent the left the right and left tackle position is good um, you, you still have Austin Corbett, who's on his rookie deal, who can he could be a pretty good strength pass, you know, run blocker, and he, he's got decent pass protection skills. It's just the center and, and the uh, guard position that really led the Rams to have it a pretty mediocre year. Um, they were still in the hunt, but we still ended up nine and seven, and just one game above losing or above being like just basically even. So. Uh, the Rams really need to fix that offensive line. And they can fix that offensive line. Your wide receivers are, you know, top five in the league again. Your quarterback will be up there with some of the best. Jared Goff is a top ten quarterback. If, if you can give him protection, he's out there throwing darts. I think he has better accuracy than, like, 20 NFL quarterbacks in the league right now. Maybe he's not the most athletic, but he's got really good uh, accuracy and pretty decent arm strength. So if you give him a good offensive line, he's back to 2017, 2018 type of season. So that's what we're going to be talking about today is Rams offensive linemen, specifically the guards, my top five. And it's specifically my top five. I'll be making a Rams mock draft um, probably after the NFL Combine. Just because I want to see what their 40 time is going to be, what their their uh, what everybody else is talking about them, if it really like confirms what I think about some of these linemen. Some of them you might not think they're that good, and I'll put them ahead of other people. Some of them I think they'll have concerns and issues, so they'll probably dr um, drop in the draft. But mainly, it's uh, a pretty good analysis of what I think the Rams will value and who will they go after. And if they, if I maybe don't add somebody that I think you guys will put them number one, it's probably because I think they'll be gone by the time the Rams start picking. So um, there's two linemen, one from Georgia, one from Oregon, that I think will be gone. So I'm not going to talk about them because why am I going to talk about them if I know for sure the Rams are not going to pick them up? Because the Rams draft pretty late in the second round, and those guys are probably late first, early second. So. Let's get on with the video, and the first player that I'm going to be talking about is Natane Muthi out of Fresno State. I think one of the uh, offensive linemen that I think were highly ranked in pro football focus, but he does have injury concerns. He did, um, I think, hurt his Achilles or, or his uh, or his knee, and he was out for like the whole year, basically. I think he, he didn't play his senior year at all, and he only played... Um, he only played a few games because of his injury in 2018. So a lot of people don't really know much about him. So he's projected to go in the fifth to sixth round. And if anything, he'll probably be an um, undrafted free agent. So I think the Rams have a good chance of getting a guy. But he but he does have injury concerns. He's had, He has been injured. But it's, not, it's something that if the Rams had a sixth rounder, why not go draft another lineman? That you know was a first round second round caliber player when he was healthy you know what i mean he's had a a full season to to uh, heal and um he was a monster man for fresno state uh muthi was basically brawling and destroying his opponents at fresno state he was going against teams like usc and um Hawaii and you know maybe he's not the best competition but he dominated a lot of them and then when he went against USC he was out there just beating people up so I'm gonna put the some tape from USC uh, and Fresno State when they played and him just whooping on a bunch of like basically a, it's a big school USC is a big school and he's from Fresno State so I would say he's like a, a mid-tier school when it comes to a football program and he's whooping on people left and right like his tape is insane but then you got all these injury concerns and it's just 
and not the best thing if you want to have, uh, uh, you know, if you want to be a player dra- drafted high in the in, or mid mid round in the uh, NFL draft. Maybe if he goes to the combine and his combine's pretty insane and he's out there going one on ones, you know what I mean, like uh, destroying people. Then yeah, but uh, main, mainly you'll have to wait and see what happens. But it, it, he's going to be a great quality guard that a lot of people are going to not look into maybe because of the injuries. But if you look at him, he's got fantastic run blocking ability. He's a run blocker. He is like Nelson, uh, what's that dude, Quentin Nelson-esque type of brawler. Like he goes one-on-one with a guy and he will like light you up until the, the, the whistle's blown. And he's going to keep blocking you. He'll pancake you. He'll, he'll body slam you. He is that type of offensive line. And that's why I put him at my number five because I will still draft him if he's available in the fourth to fifth round. That's just a risk I'm willing to take because the upside is so damn high with this guy. And his pass protection is pretty decent. I have never seen him get out muscled, out bull rushed, and, and, and out, you know, I've never seen a guy go um, and put some moves on him that's a, like a speedy guy. I've never seen him get beat. I've never seen anyone beat this man other than, you know, injuries. But the guy is a, a beast at 6'3", 307, um, a Samoan brawler. And his projected 40 time is going to be 5.20. And like I'll put, he's a little Quentin Nelson. He's a Samoan Quentin Nelson if you can just stay healthy. Now moving on to the next one is going to be, I have so many damn guards that I, I really like. The next one's going to be Jonah Jackson out of Ohio State. Um, he is a decent-ish guard. Um, he's not going to be an elite guard. That's why they have him projected at three to f- around three to five. He is going to be, to me, a very solid mid-round guard. Like if, let's say, we were we were going to go this route, he will still be better than than um, Joseph Noteboom at guard. Like I know that for sure, just by looking at him, looking at his build. He's a power guy. Um, great run blocking skills. Decent-ish pass blocking skills. Um, agility, not much agility. That's kind of why I put him at four, uh, mainly because of his 40 time. It's projected to be 5.60. He's not the fastest guy. He's more of a power guy. And he's not, like, in screen passes and stuff like that, he will not get up the field that fast. Like, he will probably not be the best guy to decide to go a screen pass his way. But he will be a really good guy in, like, goal line distance or um, just trying to get that that three to four yards for a first down at the run uh, running game he'll move guys around and um at 6 3 3 10 he's got decent built um he did go from Rutgers to Ohio State but um he can also take snaps at center so he's a little versatile when it comes to that but mainly I would use him at guard and if I were to like let's say some of the other guys that I'll name are drafted first then he will be a pretty good get in the draft because I, he was pretty decent at the senior bowl going against pretty good competition. And um, Ohio State's one of the best programs in the country, man. And to me, if you don't have an offensive line that's worth a damn, your 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 team's not, not going to be good. And to tell you the truth, Jonah Jackson is pretty good. Um, I've seen tape about this guy, and he moves people. He's a people mover. Uh, like I said, pass protection is pretty decent. But a lot of people are just kind of hating on him because they say that he has very short arms. But, I mean, if you can block guys, you can block guys. I don't care how big or small your arms are or how uh, fast your 40 time is. As long as you can, you know, be not a, be a liability. And in, in, in protected round three to five, I think that's a pretty good get. If you can get Jackson in rounds three to five, that's, that's pretty good. So let's go to guard number three now. Guard number three, in my opinion, will be Ben Bredesen out of Michigan. Um, to me, he's one of the most solid guys on here. He's great in pass protection. Um, he's even better as a run blocker. So if you're great at pass protection, like a B and an A in run blocking, and you re- <laughs> put him with Todd Gurley and get mm-hmm. Gurley going, then it's going to be night and day better for, for the Rams. As long as they can get a guy like Bredesen, um, who is actually one of the best 
solid lineman in this draft. He's projected to go to rounds three to four. So I think after the, the combine, he'll probably be going second round or third round. That's just how good I think this guy is. Um, he's a strong guy, a polished pass blocker. He's developed well at Michigan, and he's never been a liability. I've never seen anything bad said about Ben, um, and he's built 6'4", 316, uh, projected 40 times and be 5.20. So he's in, to me, he's my third favorite guard in the whole draft so far. Um, injuries have never been an issue with this guy. And he's basically, like I said, if you can get a bunch of solid pieces, like the Taylor Rapp of offensive line or the Taylor Rapp of a pass rusher, those are going to be, like, you could say in the future, oh, we got first-round talent out of, you know, this guy. Or we got first-round talent out of that guy. Like I, I would, I would put Taylor Rapp as a first-round talent, from what I've seen in his rookie year. So if you can get a first-round talent offensive lineman um, with Ben Bridison, go look at his tape. I'll be putting a bunch of tape of these players, so you guys don't have to do it. But this guy is a solid pass blocker, pass protection, good build, big body. Um, that's what we need. That's what the Rams need. Ag agility meets power. That's what the Rams need. And uh, that's exactly why I would not mind if Ben Bredesen got picked up. To me, that would be great. So he's my third favorite um, lineman in this draft. Let's go. Second favorite guard is going to be Logan Stenberg out of Kentucky. He is to me at 6'6". Six, six. So he's 6 feet 6 inches. 317 his 50 time is projected to go about 5.35 to me he is one of the best guards in the whole draft um, his run blocking is spectacular his one-on-one -on -one, um, in the senior bowl he was he was like going toe-to-toe -to -toe against some of the best guys in pass protection one-on-one -on -one, and he was solid man this guy is going to be fantastic you can plug him into any scheme like you can put him into the Ravens power base scheme you can put him into the Rams West Coast offense type of agility scheme he's going to be good at all of those um he, he would be a second day still like let's say if he goes uh in the second third or fourth round which they're projecting um he will be one of the best linemen he would be he would be a first round talent this guy's first round talent he's a, a power run blocker at the left guard He's got big frame, he's strong, and he was one of the best blockers in college. Um, he goes great against speed pass rushers and also uh, strength pass rushers. And he's just going to be one of the best um, linemen in, in the whole draft. Um, I think what I like most about him is his size. So he's 6'6", his hands um, size. They, they basically say he's like the perfect guard. And I've seen tape about this guy, Lo Logan Stenberg. And he's just been solid. And I think if the Rams were to pick this guy, you will not have any issues with, you know, Gurley running the football. You can put him next to Bobby Evans or, or uh, Andrew Whitworth. Um, depending on what they do with the center position, that's up to up to the Rams. But I think Austin Blythe will probably be a free agent. Just have, don't have the money to sign everybody. And maybe they want to restart the offensive line fresh and just kind of move forward. So Logan Stenberg would be a perfect candidate to move him in and put him in at guard. And then maybe if they draft another guy like Muthi or um, another guy that I'm going to name my favorite guard in the whole draft, if they were to draft him later, um, he will be a, they would be probably the best guard combination in the, in, in the NFL. Just to tell you, that's how much I like this guy, uh, Logan Stanberg. He's also in the, in the senior bowl. He's playing actually alongside, um, Cushionberry and uh, Damian Lewis out of LSU, and they're doing a good job, man, just running the ball, pass protection, and no one could get after the quarterback when they were on there. So it's a good thing to go check out the senior bill because he's 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 right there, Logan Stanberg. Uh, and my number one favorite guard in the whole draft, and I'm 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 pretty biased, but I just like how he's so good at run blocking, and I think it's going on notice because you know his size they just they just, <laughs> they hate on this guy but damian lewis out of lsu to me is my favorite guard i think he'll be roger saffold 2.0 and i know a lot of people were like oh we need roger saffold back you kind of don't if you go and get damian lewis 
who's projected to go in the fourth to sixth round, even though a lot of people have him like top three, top five guard. They have him at top 14. But this guy is a quality blocker for LSU. I mean, this is LSU who went undefeated. And they ended up going undefeated, winning the uh, the NCAA championship. You can't do that without a top-tier offensive lineman. And that's why I have Damian Lewis up there. I think the only hate, the only hate I see them get is that Derrick Brown beat him in a matchup against Auburn. Like, and that was the first game of the season. He was rusty. And because of that, they, that's one of the things that they said, oh, he's he's a good lineman, but he got beat by Derrick Brown. He's probably going to go in the first or second round. He got beat a couple of times in the first game. After that, they went undefeated. Um, he's great as a pass protect as pass protector. He is a little chubby, but at 6'3. His his uh, speed is not good. He's Roger Saffold 2.0. His speed is not the best, but he can move bodies out of the way. And that's why I like Damian Lewis. Um, he started at LSU and he is uh you could probably put him at, at center if you needed to, but his his love and joy is gonna be at the guard position. He lacks athleticism, but he makes up for it in pass protection and power. So, you know, this guy is uh, overall quality. I will put him, Bredesen, and Logan Stenberg as my top three linemen that the Rams will have a really good chance of getting because of their um, speed isn't quite like, oh my God, you know, he they're so fast and strong and big. But they're big quality offensive linemen that you can plug in at the running game and get Todd Gurley going, get Jerry Goff protection, and give them time to let the play develop and not like, how do you say, collapse, which happened with the Rams when they decided to put Joseph Noteboom at left guard and Brian Allen undersized at center. And they just got pushed around like ragdolls, just destroyed. Go watch that Buccaneers game again, or go watch the... Uh, the 49ers game again, uh, the early 49ers game from last year with the Rams. You don't want that to happen. If you don't want that to happen, get Damian Lewis, get Stenberg, get Bredesen, get these guys, get Muthi. Um, get these guys because they will be very, very good blockers for you. And I've never seen Damian Lewis get outpowered. I've never seen it happen. I've seen him just move bodies around casually just move people around solid blockers solid talent and um just you do not do what lsu did without a good offensive line and damian lewis was one of the reasons why they went undefeated i'm just going to say that i'm going to put that out there and he went in the fourth to sixth round that's what they're projecting he'll be gone second or third round i can tell you that right now i'll put money on that that he will be gone by the second or third round with a competent, a competent team that will uh, draft him a lot earlier than most people and will be happy that they did because they will have a really good offensive line. So let me know what you guys thought. That's my top five guards for the Rams to go and target in the draft. They do have like a second round, third round, fourth round, fifth round. They have a sixth round and seventh round. They got, they got picks, man, but... They'll be able to trade some of these picks to move down. Probably they, they can probably put in like the 5th, 6th, and 7th round and go get another 4th round. I'm pretty sure the Rams are able to do that. And if they do, they got linemen for days. Interior linemen will be a surplus in this draft. Tackles, I think we can do without tackles. We have Joseph Noboom. We have um, David Edwards, Bobby Evans, and most likely um, Andrew Whitworth. I think we'll have four quality you know, depth linemen to plug in, but we need interior linemen and this is the draft to go get them. So let me know what you guys think. Leave a like, leave a share, leave a comment. I hope you guys liked the video and I will be doing centers next.